Wow. <laughs> In a long time. I know, man. What's grew, going on with you? Yeah, you grew your hair out. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I can still do it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can. I can't say the same for myself. <laughs> you know, you still look like you got a full head of hair. Yeah, I got a head of hair, but if it starts to grow out, if I, if it gets too long, it starts mm-hmm. to look like, um, you know, it's all it's all heavy in here, and then it's real thin up here. You know, oh, okay. So Fifty-year-old virgin. You know. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with you, man? Hey, man. Hey, I, I already started recording. I just start recording at the beginning, and we just no worries. We just kind of key in wherever. Um, I'm on vacation, so this is actually uh, this is actually uh, used to be the the bedroom that I lived in when uh, when I was in high school which is it's now my uh, the office of my mom. So that's where I'm recording this from. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you joining me, dude. Thanks for having me. I, uh, hold on one second. I'm making tea. I oh. just woke up. Oh. Well, get, get your tea. We're, we're good. Hold on, hold on one second. I can still hear you. I got you on my headset. Oh, man. Oh. I'm just decided to go in my backyard. Yeah, if it's quiet. Yeah, it should be pretty quiet. Everyone's, you know, everyone else has to work <laughs> in this neighborhood. That's right. They have they have nine to five jobs. Yeah. Yeah. The nine to fivers, yeah. Are you in Florida or are you uh Yeah, yeah, I'm in Florida. Yep. And then my sister and my nephew are driving down here um, in like a couple of days on Christmas Day. We all basically will get together for Christmas Day for a couple of days and then I'll come back home to, you know. How, how does it get? Are you, aren't you Jewish? Yeah, but my grandfather was born on Christmas Day. Uh-huh. So when we were growing up, we would always celebrate Hanukkah on Christmas Day as a family, like whole family would get together. I mean, we celebrate Hanukkah all through Hanukkah, but if it if it didn't fall out on Christmas Day, then we'd all make a plan to get together on my grandfather's birthday, which was December 25th. Oh, and, you know, the last Jewish guy born on December 25th. <laughs> yeah, there's another Jewish guy born on December 25th, exactly. <laughs> so i mean although i've been uh looking at it i don't know if jesus's birthday was really december 25th it probably wasn't <laughs> <laughs> it was some other time of year according to like biblical scholars yes biblical scholars put it actually you know the funny thing about it which i'm very happy about you know what they put his date quote unquote his possible birth date it's June seventeenth. Is that your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful for you. Yeah. Wow. Oh man. That is... Although you wouldn't want that, because then no, you wouldn't no. have a birthday. No. I so in, in ways, he just gave you many gifts. True. Including altering his birthday to the other part of the year, so that you yeah. could have two. You could yes. have two celebrations a year. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's Unlike funny. my daughter, my daughter's birthday, and I don't do it to her, but um, it's, I, they used to do it to my sister, is uh, basically give her uh, one big gift for her uh, birthday. Actually, I did like this cushion behind me. <laughs> All right. I'll show you. I'm, this is my. I'm. I'm at, I'm at home. My backyard. Nice backyard. This is during the pandemic. I got into gardening. Well, at the beginning of it. Is that what that? Is that what that? Oh, okay. Is that what that net is over there? Yeah. So you just that's to keep bugs out or something? Yeah, yeah. Because they were eating all my. <laughs> I was growing greens and mint and. It was. Yeah, they were just. They it. were just having a. You were feeding making, the community, basically. Yes. yes. <laughs> and this is 
this house. So the last time we really were connected, you were living in Inglewood. Now you're in. I'm actually in, out towards Temecula. Temecula. Okay. Which is yeah. like, you know, like 45 minutes east That's, of uh, LA. It's uh, about an hour, hour southeast of LA. Hour southeast of LA. And by the way, no idea zone people, if you're watching this, mm -hmm. Don't go looking for Willis Turner. Don't don't bother him at home. You know, he has enough of that shit. That's why he had to leave fucking Englewood and move to Temecula in the first place. Because every all the Cat Williams fans, all the Cat Williams fans. <laughs> yeah, they, they hunted me down. They were you, know, you know what's so funny? Uh, you know the movie Internet Dating? Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I remember you guys shooting it. Yeah. So people have seen me in it and they're like, hey. Weren't you in that movie with Cat Williams? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I think he turned down some other movie to do that, which is the most uh, tragic thing. Yes, a, a very, very <laughs> lucrative movie. Right. Do you do. remember what it was? Because this is this no. will get fun. No, I can't remember what it was, but it was something with the studio. It was something with the studio. It was a Master P movie. Yeah, and he so he turned down a lucrative studio movie Wow, this is a good way to start. This is a good way to just start and get into it. He turned down a studio movie because he owed, this was the word around the set, he owed Master right. P a favor. Right. And, or Master P showed up with a big case of cash. And well, that's what was the thing, is that supposedly he owed him a favor. It was two, two schools of thought. He, he owed Master P a favor. He also money but he was also thinking oh i can get into the business of making inexpensive movies like master p if i learn how he's doing it so i'll do this with him and i was like well honestly you can pay someone to make an inexpensive movie <laughs> yeah. you can get with the right people like it's so not hard that was the whole that was the whole mentality behind the burbank studio ever all of that was yeah he was just going to try to make his own shop. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But and, and he could have. He, actually he could have. But when you make your own movie inexpensively, they come out like Master P movies a lot of times. Right. So, but Master P movies are making money because somebody surprisingly they, making I money. Guess so they, what do they, they buy them at Walmart or well, well, right. stream. He, hey, honey, we're streaming a Master P movie tonight. Hold on a second. The people in the movie aren't making money. <laughs> no, don't get it. the people producing the Master P is making money. This is all I remember. We were shooting in the Valley. I think we were shooting in Glendale, and you were in a. It was you and Cat, and there was some other actor, and you guys were all working at like a burger joint. You had yes. like the burger joint hat on, yeah, the burger joint uniform yes. on. Yes. And we were all like the writer, we, you know, we were all standing outside watching you guys shoot. And Dude. apparently the scene called for a mentally ill customer yeah. in the burger shop who was female. And you ended up starting to dance with her and you danced her out of the. Yes. <laughs> so that was a, you know, a proud improvisation. I mean, that was a, you, you were, you were, I mean, that was a pretty proud day. Well. I I will say this. I have been known for my improv. Put it that way. <laughs> uh, and I'll say, uh, if you watch that movie, in that scene, in the in one scene, my hat, because there's no one taking continuity. So my hat starts on and off three times in that movie because there is no one keeping track of continuity because continuity in a Master P movie is actually counterintuitive <laughs> did they keep the, did they keep the, did they keep the, the take with you dancing her out of the yeah i think so i think they did yeah you know because it was funny it was it worked it fit um I, i'm surprised i haven't done any more master p movies he shouldn't be calling me up <laughs> to do a couple of more you figured master you could p get the three picture deal right I could yeah. at least get the like three hundred deal that at least gave me a PlayStation Five at this point. <laughs> yeah, like some kind of gift, bag, celebrity gift yeah. bag. Um, 
So this will this will lead me into another thing that I'm remembering now. Because as I talk to you, what's fun is when we talked on yeah. the phone, I was kind of like, "Fuck, you know, it's good to catch up." But I kind of want to. Those moments are also good for pot or good for podcast, and they get yeah. lost a little bit when when you have that first conversation. But as I talk to you, all these memories are popping up. So here's another one. Uh, okay. uh, uh, referring to our, our, you know, um, late friend, Daryl Littleton. Yeah. Um, and by the way, for those of you who don't know what's going on is Willis and DeMilitan and I, Willis was Kat's best friend, you would say probably for 20 years, right? For at least 15, 10, 15, 15 years. Yeah. And, um, and then DeMilitan, so when Kat started blowing up, DeMilitan was sort of like the head of the writer's group, kind of. Yeah. He yeah, kind of was. was our our head writer, and yeah. um and then I came later. I I was yeah. his new. I was Cat's new friend, sitting around yeah. two thousand seven. Um, and so anyway, after it all ended, I remember De Milton calling me, and uh, saying, you know, and he he had a lot of inside knowledge and inside information that we didn't have. Right. Um, you may have had, but that I did not know. And one of those things was the writer of Rain Man, the guy who wrote Rain Man, uh -huh. loved Cat and sent Cat really? a script for Cat to star in. You didn't know that. I did not know this. Straight from DeMilitant, straight from Daryl's Daryl's mouth. Nice. Of one of the many things at the peak of his, his fame yeah. that were being offered to him. And Cat, I guess Cat, I don't know, maybe he had too much going on or he, I don't know. I don't know what that project what? was. What, what, what would you turn that down? You got to do internet dating. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to launch your friend Willis Turner and get your friend Willis Turner some traction with the Master P franchise. Right, because... You know, actually, they wanted they asked me asked me to come in a couple of times for a couple other small bits that parts that he was doing. And one time uh, we were shooting another Master P movie. Unlike Master P to have permits or because it's non-union, he didn't he never got permits. He never got. <laughs> so one time uh, the union came around and was like, hey, are you supposed to be here? All of a sudden. Someone just snuck around to everyone. It was like, hey, go home. Go ahead and go home. Go home. We're, oh, we're, we're done. We're, like, they never, like, there was no first AD that came over, like, hey, everyone, we're shutting down for the day. It was just, hey, uh, we'll pay you, but we, you got to go home. You got to go home. You just act like you're getting your hair cut. And I was like, this guy doesn't cut hair for real. I'm not letting him cut, touch my head. So. <laughs> That's the acting. That's the acting part there right, was. Right. Um, so, so we all had to shut down. We sh got shut down because of uh, trying to get a permit. They didn't have. He didn't have permits. He never had permits. Um, Who was coming? Did you, did you ever get a? Because that's some funny shit. Uh, it was G thing was there. You remember G thing? Okay. Uh, and then. Uh, I can't remember who else was there. There was a couple other guys there, but they were like, "Man, you're funny." I was like, "What do you think I was? You think I yeah. was?" Well, they're, he's, they're comparing that to what they're used to seeing on set, maybe. Well, they they were, you know, they had never listened to me. A lot of comics just because I'm not that loud comic. I'm not a loud. Right, you don't swing a towel. You mean you don't swing a towel around? Willis Turner doesn't swing a towel around on stage no, after. No. As he delivers his punchlines, and I'm not, I'm not demonstrative. I'm, I'm very, and that was the one thing Cat even said. He says he's very understated. There's an understatement to him, but it's a fucking powerful undercurrent. <laughs> well, if you listen to what I'm saying, yeah. Well, you're doing, you know, another thing about you is you were the one who turned me on. Not turned me on. I knew, I knew all about Bill Hicks. I was a fan yeah. of Bill Hicks. But you, I think, reintroduced me to Bill Hicks. Right. Um, because back when I got, because, you know, Kat gave us all laptops. Right. But we'll go through all that because that's fun yeah. shit. Uh, yeah. Everybody got a Prius. 
I, I remember I told Cat I'm going on tour, and uh, I go, I'm going on tour. He goes, "Well, we we all encourage the comedy tour around here. Everybody's everybody's happy <laughs> when you go to." So I went out to do my little piddly comedy zone tour for the uh-huh. fucking shitty comedy zone. Right. And when I came back, everybody had a Prius but me. <laughs> he, he had given everybody a Prius. Right. You know. Anyway, I got my laptop. Uh, well, yeah. you want to know why I got the Prius? Yeah, to tell tell me a little about share that it, a little. Bit. Well, I, I'm not a big, you know, I was like, look, I don't overspend. I'm not a big flashy guy, so I'll never get a flashy car or anything like that. So I just yeah, had a you had Fred Flintstone's fucking V dub. Yeah. And that was it. And I was cool with it. I was like, hey, this is what I got. This is what I'm gonna get through with. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. Like, so I was like, I still get women. I still get, <laughs> I still get That's money. True, by I'm the still... way, I'm witness, I'm witness to that. <laughs> he did get. So, I get. I still get what I what I need out of life. Right. So I didn't care about the car, but Cat thought, well, this is I can't have you in my uh, crew, and this is what you roll <laughs> up in. I was like, yeah, oh, but he gave Priuses to everybody had a Prius, brother. Even right. people with functioning new cars got a Prius. Yeah. I don't understand why. I was like, well, I don't care about this Prius. I don't really need it, Prius. Didn't you get in a wreck? It. Didn't you get in a wreck with that thing? Or was that no. somebody else? That was somebody else. Cookie okay. got in a wreck, I think. Who did? Cookie. Okay. I think she got into a wreck, but somebody, yeah. How long did you have that Prius? Because then he took them all back or something, right? Uh, I think like eight months. That was it. Or nine, maybe nine. I, then he took them back. I was like, I, I really don't care. I have my own car. <laughs> I go. I, 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 I was. I made sure that I was never attached to because I knew. <laughs> I knew. I've known Cat a long time, so I know how he gets. He's fickle. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Big fickle time. like a cat, like a normal cat. He, so. he takes to you at the beginning. He takes to you like a puppy. Right. And then he turns into the cat. Yes. When he yeah. starts to think he, he can't trust you, he can't trust anybody. So that whole thing, you know. Yeah. But, it was that. It was, I, I'll tell you this, it was like, and having the Prius, I, I love the Prius, but fucking gas. I mean, I had to get the oil change. Do you ever get the the oil change was expensive as fuck? Really? Yes. How often did you have to do that? You only had the car eight months. Uh, well, you know, it's California. You drive a lot. Yeah, you and drive. we were driving to fucking Burbank because then he was taking making us go to Burbank every week. Right, Burbank, and you know, and I'm living in Inglewood. Right, right. And so, a matter of fact, uh, I actually ended up getting a ticket coming from the studio one time in Burbank. Because remember, we'd stay there till two, three in the morning, or yeah. five in the morning, six in. The, sometimes we stayed till the sun up. Right. Uh, yeah. And and so I'm driving home one time, and a cop, I just cop just pulled me over. He goes, "Well, you got into the left turn lane too soon." I go, "What?" You're giving me a ticket because I got in the left turn lane. Right. You went into the middle. You went into the middle of the road before the left turn lane. <laughs> yeah. He goes. I was like, I rather. I'd rather you just said I needed to pull a black guy over today <laughs> and figure out what's he doing. Was it in Burbank that that happened? No, Hollywood. Because I was. I was. I was. I was. I was fucking tired, dude. We've been right. up. Right. So, you so I think he freeway. thought I might have been drunk. Yeah. Well, you're lucky that that's all that happened then if you've been drinking a little. No, I hadn't been drinking. Oh, but okay. I'm saying, he thought you were drunk. He thought he was going to get a drunk driver. Yeah. Yes, yes. But I was just tired. I was like, dude, I have, I, I got to get home. I got to get some sleep. And he's like, I've been up all night. I was like, just give me the ticket. And I fought the ticket and won. <laughs> so for those of you out there who don't think you can fight for justice and bring a man down. This is proof that it can be done. It can be done. So, okay. <clears throat> but yeah, it was, it was my bug, my car, that whole, that whole time was a trippy time for me. You know, uh, at the time I was going through a divorce, I was, 
I just had a baby. Had a new baby, brand, brand yeah. new baby, yeah. Yeah, that, that whole time was just crazy for me. Just, just absolutely crazy. I mean, I still got a, a, a child and an ex-wife, but. <laughs> right, but your child is like in almost in high school now. Yeah, yeah. She is um, actually a freshman in high school now. So this is going, our, our experience with that is going back to 2007. You were there though, when, when 2000, did you start? No, 2000, uh, 2006. 2000, 2006 was when he said to you, <coughs> Willis, I need you to. Look. No, 2005, he said that actually. 2000, um, he wanted me to come work with him. 2005, 2006, somewhere in there. And so I was working and he was like, I need you to come up to the house and let's talk. And so I went up there, I took a lunch break because at the time I was working at Fox. I was fucking doing some office job at Fox. And uh, he was like, uh, I want you to come with me, work with me, blah, 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 blah. And that's actually the last time I had a day job, actually. Uh, <coughs> a normal office job, I should say. Um, he, was, he was starting in 2005 to get like white fans. Yeah. yeah. And so then he was asking me to come on and I was like, well, I got this job. I need to quit at first. And he goes, well, you don't have to worry about that. You can just quit tomorrow and come work. I was like, no, no, no. I need to give two weeks. I like the people. So I'm going to give them two weeks and let them know I'm leaving. And they're like, all right, all right. I'll let you do that. I was like, oh, thanks for letting me. <laughs> That's back when he was a, a lot more flexible. Yeah. But then also he didn't have... Um, the power that he did at the time, at the point when right. we were there with him, like, it, you know, he had, after a while, he just started getting all this power, people wanting him to be there, and blah, blah, you know, the bullshit, the Hollywood bullshit, uh, how it goes. Um, then, let me see. So I, I went and I started working there with him and it was crazy, dude. It was, it was at the, you, the world went because they hadn't figured out how to s square things up and keep things in organized. And it was a fucking whirlwind, a uh, whirlwind. And this is before you had the office in uh, we're, we're right. Marina Del Rey. Right. Was it Marina Del Rey? Yeah. Marina Del Rey was where I reconnected with you. Just yeah. real quickly, so people know, I knew Willis, I knew Ricochet, I knew Daryl, I knew all of them, Corey, just through the black comedy scene and comedy. Yeah, we all we all were friends. Uh, I just yeah. didn't know Cat because I was newer. You know, I was I was a little younger comic and newer. So what yeah. he's what he's related and especially to me, new to the to the LA scene. <laughs> to the LA scene, yeah, I wasn't right. I didn't even I didn't even land in LA till the beginning of 2002. Okay. Yeah. So, and you and I met through I think we met at Mixed Nuts, but we met through other juke joint comedy yeah. places. But it was interesting for me, just from my perspective, it was interesting that all my people I thought were real cool, like you and Demilitant, and obviously Demilitant was my major senior. I mean, he'd been around for a long, probably before you even, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So he was a like a he was a. Uh, sort of a very respected established comedian. Like if he walked into a black comedy club, they knew who he was and they were going to put him on. Ricochet produced Cat. He was the guy who produced Cat, right? Before yeah. every, anybody. Mm -hmm. But even he only went back to like, I think the late 90s with, yeah. with comedy. So, um, but you had known Cat. What's, did you know him in the Bay Area? I met him in the Bay Area. Uh, I remember I did the black uh, Bay Area black competition comedy competition what year give me the give me some year if you can what was that 96 um yeah 96 so you you were probably meeting cat around 96 like you guys have been friends yeah since 96 97 then we knew each other then he was came down here in 98 uh and we hung out we would uh we played we would go play basketball play we played you know 
and he we would play basketball and at one time we were going to move in together uh but i was like you smoke like crazy <laughs> and you're like me you can't fucking handle that and i was like I, look i just would feel bad telling a man who's paying rent go outside to go outside right. <laughs> yeah, right so i said well i go how about we just stay friends and not live together <laughs> Because I don't see it ending well. <laughs> Not that I'm a prognosticator or anything like that. But he uh, he was like, all right, you're right, you're right. I go, okay, just saying. And then, uh, but we we always hung out. We'd go play basketball. We'd go have, we go to thanks. My mom's cooked Thanksgiving. We'd go have Thanksgiving at my, my mom's house. We'd have Christmas at my mom's house. Micah, his son at the time, it still is his son, but his son, his young, his young son, he was, I think his son was, I think Michael was seven, six wow. or seven, early 2000s. And we, I'd be like, hey, let's go out to my mom's house, uh, eat, have, you know, Christmas dinner. Or, and my mom would, you know, get some little cheap toys, you know, as a kid for Micah. Because me and Kat didn't have money at the time. Kat didn't have enough. I didn't have any money. For sure. I was like, shit. I, I couldn't even, at that time, I couldn't imagine even having this little house that I have now. <laughs> That's how we all were at that time. I right. Mean, I, I was living in my Corolla. Right, right. And I'm fucking, whew. so um, go back to, what is that? So then we, we fast forward, we, he all of a sudden hits Friday and, you know, me and Kat were like, wow, that's amazing. I remember one time he got stuck. He had to, uh, he got stuck. This is right after Friday got released. He was like, hey, man, I'm stuck. Me and Micah are stuck. I don't have any money to get on the bus, blah, 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 blah. Can you come get me? And I was like, sure, I'll come get you. And I was at work. I was working. I was at work. And I was like, ah, I'll be back. I just took off. They didn't even know where I went. <laughs> just took off. Wow. For two and a half hours, I was gone to give him a ride because he was my friend. When you're my friend and, and as good of friends as we were, I was like, hey, I'm gonna do what I gotta do to help you out. You remember and where he was going? I know that's a, a hard memory to, do you remember? No, he was... no, he actually had to, he was going, he was leaving his managers. So he had to go all the way. The McClaffrey. Yeah. He had to go all the way back over to uh, what is that? West to Western. West. No, he had to go to Western. He was leaving them. And guess what? So you know he was all Westwood and that Wilshire. I remember. I, I interviewed with them. I know. I know exactly where they were. They were right over Bristol Farms. They had oh, that little. Wow. Yeah. You didn't? Did you? It didn't work out with you and them. Um, I interviewed with them. They saw me at Chocolate Sundays have a have a great set. Bring the house down, two thousand four, two thousand three, some something like that. Uh -huh. And I went in and I interviewed with them, and they passed on me. It was something maybe there was a some word of mouth, or I didn't have a. I, I think I sent them a video. I didn't have a very good video. I don't know, yeah. but it's it's funny. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Go say. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> It was it was gay pride parade. Oh, and I got shit. stuck in that you know. Oh shit. <laughs> I got stuck in the traffic and I had to get back to work and I was like, fuck me. Right. Fuck me. And it was one of those things of uh, how do I explain this to my boss that I'm two hours <laughs> behind and I didn't clock out. <laughs> Well, you obviously things worked out okay. Yeah, they worked out, but it was still. I'm. I'm. You don't know how many times I've put a, a day job in jeopardy for comedy, <laughs> or well, for comedy specifically for the guy who was going to be the biggest comedian in North America in a, in a few right. years, who didn't have right. any money and didn't have a car and had a kid. Didn't have a car. Had was a he kid. living in the U-Haul then, or was he at least he had a place? He he had a place. He was living in uh, Rita Jones' place. Remember that little apartment building? 
Oh, I stayed at Aretha Jones' house one one week. Uh, I didn't okay. I didn't know she had an apartment building. I think it was her apartment, but they were selling it. Okay. And so he they let he was him staying with her. She was staying with. Her. She put him up, and and he, you know, <clears throat> it was funny because I give it to him. He 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 pimped it out. <laughs> He was a unique and talented person. I mean, there's yeah. there's no taking away from the, the level of talent and genius. It, no, you know, you, you couldn't take away from his talent. I, I honestly, I, it, even though I, I, me and him aren't as aren't friends like that, I still think he's arguably still one of the funniest guys out there. One of the funniest guys we that's in the limelight, like legitimately funny, not funny because you've written the right material for him right he's legitimately funny. he didn't need us just to be clear for people who will be watching yeah. this he did not need us to write material as writers we were punching up scripts i mean i don't know maybe you were writing material but when you get with this these guys like who my feeling was this guy wanted to help people he liked well i i have punched up stuff in his material like stand up i was like all right you know every every artist no matter where you are or who you are, we, we all need help from a perspective of we can't we can't look at ourselves. Well, you were and, also there before. You were really there before he had access and resources. So you guys, you guys could have just been batting shit around as yeah. buddies, you know. Yeah. Well, he, he always like that was, that was a joke that I used to do. Uh uh, uh, the Steve Irwin joke of you know him in the jungle and he's all look at that look at that oh yeah. crikey you know that whole that you kind had, of you had like a lot of comics you had a, a right the joke I that that it became hacky at that yes point because, it did because but at the time I did it I was like look at that we are in the ghetto and, and I was like look at look at you know and I had this joke talking about this oh look at there is the uncle we know he's the uncle for he still has dress socks with sneakers on <laughs> and then and then uh yeah, and cat did an american hustle he did a alligator yeah. uh whatever that guy's yeah. name was crocodile yeah. hunter yeah and then he i was like i think he goes oh oh look at this oh i, I I'm, I'm i'm stuck in a what they call a jack move oh because tonight I did this whole thing of getting caught up in a jack move, and Cat was like, "Oh," and I and I did it like two or three times. I never. The problem is I come up with all this material and then I stop doing it. So, and I go to other stuff. I'm just like, ah. Well, you you see seven or eight comics doing the same premise yeah. that you're doing, and I get tired of doing it. And it, of course, it's my take on it, but I just get like, all right, well, if they're going to do all of that. I don't feel like doing it. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just like I, I wrote a joke about, uh, you know, what was it? What was one joke that I did that everyone was like, man, I want that joke. Uh, I did a joke about Obama. I did a joke about OJ that everybody wanted. A lot of people wanted, I should say. Because this one guy was like, ah, this one guy was like, hey, man, he actually tried to confront me and fight me on the joke. Not fight, but just like, you know, he had something let similar. Me he thought yeah. he might have jacked what he was doing, but he you had, you had not. There was nowhere near similar. <laughs> I was like, but he was like, he just wanted to, he wanted my joke. He wanted, he, my, the way I, the, the way I took it was way different and better than his, the way he took it. Because, like, it was an OJ joke. So it was an OJ joke. And I said, uh, I said, uh, OJ couldn't have been married to a black woman. He couldn't have done it to a black woman because as soon as he snuck out of the bushes with a knife, <clears throat> she would have shot him in the knees. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> and I was like, Papa, how are you going to bring a knife to a gunfight? <laughs> and, so, and, you know, and get off my porch. What was his and joke? Sure you remember his joke? His joke was, you know, uh, the woman was crying about OJ at the door, talking about you know him, you know OJ, his stats, and blah blah blah. And he goes on about 
a couple of other things. And I was like, it was kind of a, a it was obvious joke of, oh, you, you know, the poor white woman and the typical, oh, the white woman is going to always fall down. The, the white woman is going to uh, placate to the big, strong black man. And that was it. It was just kind of like, okay. He had a lame take on something. You had a little bit bigger laugh. Yeah. So and, and, <laughs> he thought maybe he could like, Will, uh, what was yeah. the guy's name? Willie Dixon, you know, the, the blues yeah. guy who, who yes. supposedly wrote all those blues songs, but <laughs> turns out he actually like intimidated all these motherfuckers into signing the right to their songs away because he was a gangster. <laughs> Don't you love that? Guys is like, I wrote this, right? Yeah. Right no, that I wrote write this. That. No, no. <laughs> but anyway. So, but, so, yeah. So take me to 2005 real quick when he calls you. He's living in the valley, right? This is the yeah. valley house. Yeah. Yes. Woodland Hills uh, or somewhere. Woodland I never Hills. went there. Woodland Hills, yeah. So I go there, uh, we're talking, and it's like all these women are in the house and kids are in the house. And I was like, okay. And he was like, oh, yeah, you, you can have your wife. You and your wife can come live here. And I was like, no, that ain't happening. <laughs> because, but that was love, man. That was love. Yeah. I mean, even though he probably had recording devices in every room, right? You know, I was, I was, I was like, you're not, you're not getting my wife up here, and she's like, well, I was like, my wife's pregnant at the time, and I go, you're not getting her up here, she's not gonna come up and deal with all this craziness. It was, that's like, happening. it was like a fucking like Disneyland or something. Yeah, well, it was, it was Disneyland and the Playboy Mansion all at once. <laughs> so, wow. It was wow. just because it was just women, and it was some beautiful women, some, some, not all, but some. So by two thousand seven, when I showed up, that had calmed down. It had calmed down because now it was getting. It wasn't just oh we're touring, oh we're making, oh we're making big money now. Right. You know what I mean? We're not making just a couple we hundred hood, grand. We, right. We're not hood rich anymore. We're we're moving into a different realm. So you can't be the helicopter. Can you still hear me? I, I can't hear the helicopter. You're good. Oh, okay. Uh, there's, there's not a, uh, you're not in the realm of hood. You're now in the realm of, oh, this is more than just. Yeah, $30 million a year. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that is a completely different realm and you can't act. Like, I remember one time I, uh, they were like, hey, Willis, can you, I was, they wanted me to go through some of the messages and write down what they needed because they, they hadn't cleared the voicemail. Like he was getting gigs, corporate gigs for like 80,000 for 10 minutes. Wow. They were like, we'll give you 80,000. I know you're in town. We'll give you 80,000. We'll give you 40,000 for 10, 15 minutes. Wow. That's the dream, brother. 10 minutes, you're getting $40,000. That's, That's it. That's just insane. Yeah. He was taking those, right? Some of them he was taking. But I was like, you, you're crazy. Like, dude, he could have easily have said, if, he would have been, if, if it would have been me, I would have actually said, okay, I'm, I'll have my opener come by. Do, give, give half of that and I'll have my opener come by. And blah, blah, they don't want to give half of that to the opener, dude. But I, I know what you're saying. But I'm like, you just need. Are you? Do you just want me, or you just need comedy? I was like, because they you just, just want, want him. Comedy, yeah, because that's you just that me, is. I never even heard of that. Ten minutes, fifteen minutes for eighty grand. Yeah. That's insane. Because it, it, it's just a, a morale thing. It's not really. They don't care about. All the otherness, all the other stuff that come goes along with it. It's just the morale part. You know what when, I mean? When would you say those gigs started coming in? Those those kind of what you you two thousand six, two thousand, yeah. Like you know, he was getting at the point he was doing, and that's when he was doing all those gigs with Red Grant and Linnell and Melanie, and touring with them. That first time, first time out. Why didn't? Uh, I, I, I was 
there was this very weird situation where not weird but he took me and cookie and this is at the um at the burbank studio so he'd already done that tour with lunell and and melanie and red right and he took me and cookie and little g was there right <laughs> he took the three of us aside and he said okay uh write on uh, I mean, here's a piece of paper and a pencil and I want you to write what you want for a show for touring, for performing live with me. And I took my piece of, and I went, oh, this is my shot. Mm -hmm. And I took my piece of paper and I wrote some ridiculous amount of like $1,000 a show. What I right. thought was acceptable, but also I was out of my mind. I should have just said, I should have said 500 a show. Because whatever the fuck Cookie wrote down, she was the one he took. <laughs> i don't know what the fuck she wrote down in that he said i'll give you a blow job yeah that. right that and you know a hundred dollars a show or something whatever yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, she wasn't taking i won't share it. yeah yeah probably yeah. that was part of it as well but but cookies cookies a good comedian cookies a yeah. competent solid She's a competent solid comedian she is a solid comedian uh she's she she can do, do the job like she knows what she has to do to make the crowd laugh and that's and that's a competent comedian you did he take you out before those tours or did you ever go with him or what what went, went on uh not before those tours no we would go out and do stuff together but you would do and stuff tours. in town yeah yeah right so why didn't he, um, I'm surprised that it, uh, me, I was new. I can understand why he didn't take me. And also maybe I wouldn't have translated to his crowd, but he, he should have taken you. I mean, he should have taken I, you. I don't know why. I really don't know why. It, it, there, is, there is a myriad of guesstimations I could make, but. Maybe you didn't push for it too. Uh, no, I was like, hey, I want to go on the tour. I'll do it. And he was like, well, I need you here. And I was like, all right, cool. He felt uh, more comfortable I, with the big women. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it, it wasn't me, I didn't get picked, unfortunately. But I mean, he was at the time, I didn't care. I was like, look, he's still my friend. Uh, and that was all that mattered. Like we were just, my friendship with him meant more than just uh, um, going out on the tour. You know what? I mean, if you think about the people you're friends with, if you did blow up and you got to really do these big tours, there are a lot of comedians who I'm friends with, who I think very highly of, who I would not take out on tour with me because I would want it to be the most conducive chemistry the most conducive vibe for me when i'm going right. to close in a show right so it, he could have just had his own personal quirks like we all do you know right yeah that's what and that's, that's you know that's why i never excuse me. bless you Thank uh you. I, I never uh held it against him i was just like all right let's do it let's well, hey you know i'm just here for it you and i had a conversation i, I think it was like my second day there or my we were on the stairs you know the winding stairs mm -hmm. and i don't I'm sure you won't remember this. He had a picture like Stephen A. Smith in the stairwell and signed and all of his memorabilia and shit. And I remember when I was like, wow, Willis. Oh, well, oh, yeah, that's right. You guys are close friends, you know. And and um, we were like, you know, I mean, we knew each other. We were friends. But I didn't realize that Cat had this like this cat house empire with his pals, you know. Mm -hmm. And we were standing on the and I remember you were above me, you were standing, and I was leaving, and I go, well, okay, Willis, I'll see you tomorrow, and I go, man, this is really cool, imagine where we'll be a year from now, and I remember you said to me, shit, imagine where we'll be six months from now, right, <laughs> and little did we know, you know, this shit was going to be very temporary, well, yeah, <laughs> I, I, after a while, I started seeing it was going to be temporary, I could see, I saw the wheels coming off. When did you, when would you say that was, what was it and when? Um, I 
I'm trying to think like 2000, about 2008, 2000, like right as I was the last time really working with Kat. Excuse me, 2008, like 2007, 2008. Um, because then all of a sudden the old cat started creeping back up. Why do you say that, that old, I, the old cat? That would would end up starting fights and finding fault in things that weren't fault to be found. Like you didn't have to find fault in those things. So that guy went away for a while. Yeah. And the good cat was was sort of he would peek out every now and then, but he would keep it down and suppressed. Got it. But yeah, it was. Uh, I look terrible. I didn't realize I looked so bad. It looked like I just. Woke. No, you look good, man. You look good. People have no uh, idea how old you are. Sixty-five. <laughs> <laughs> he just turned forty. <laughs> um. The the. The old cat kind of poked up and would drop back down, peek up, drop it. So then I started going, ooh, this isn't good because he'll start fights that didn't need to start. He'll start you remember problems. specifically who he was starting with? <laughs> like I would see him when, when he was dating women, he would start fights with women that I didn't understand why he was starting a fight with her. And I was just like, I'm sitting right next to her. And it was, a, a, and it was just to sh- to exert who he was like hey i'm in control he started and, he went insane a little with that power yeah. that he had no power he went from having no power and over a right. couple of years everybody wanted to do everything for him right right that's, that's gonna make you a little insane i mean even now that's got to be a rough thing like if all of a sudden steve you just got to the point where you could fly your whole family in at any given moment because you have the money, the means. Whatever, I turn into Scarface. House. I turn into Scarface for, right. for. You'd have cocaine all around. Well, not the cocaine. <laughs> okay. The personality where I, right. if I think too much, like if I, I think the trick is to not think so much about about what things were like before. Because if right. you start thinking about nobody wanted me, because really, when you talk about nobody, he didn't have a Kevin Hart path where they. No they were nice to him. Like this guy had no teeth, no place to live a kid. You're picking him up on your work. I mean, he was living like way rougher than Richard Pryor even ever lived. Yeah. And I mean, he had a rough life. I mean, not necessarily. Well, he had a, I shouldn't say he had a rough life. You know, he's, he, he counts from both. He had both his parents in his life. He, I didn't have both of my parents. Right. But when he left home and pursued this comedy thing, he lived, I mean, I lived pretty rough. I lived pretty rough, to be fair. Um, and I think that's why he helped me. But I, I want to, but I want to stay on this thing about the, because it is interesting, the insanity that that power, if you start to think about why nobody gave you anything and nobody cared about you or loved you, right. you had to call your friend Willis Turner for a ride, right? With your, when you're, you know what I mean? Like he had to, mm-hmm. your buddy Willis Turner had to leave. Nobody cared. Right. You had a couple friends who cared and that's it. And now everybody wants to roll out the red carpet for you. Right. If you think too much about that, it'll make you start hating people. Right. And like, it would make me mad right now <laughs> that all of a sudden people are like, oh my gosh, I want to do a movie with Willis Turner. And I was like, I, I haven't, my talent hasn't changed. My talent is there. Like, I, I'll say this. You, you see yourself as a, uh, a very talented man, right? I do. Everyone should see yeah, and I see myself a very talented man. And, and you are a talented comic. Um, but it would be, it would make me so mad. Like, why didn't all of this happen sooner? Right. Why didn't this, you know. You're the same person. Same you're the person. same person you were. And the only thing that, that changed was that other people think you're important now. Right. And so everyone and- else wants to get on the important train. Right. And that I'm sure he thought, you know, I'm sure that worked on him. Yeah, yeah, it did. And it works on it would work on anyone. You you all of a sudden like, dude, I've I've done so many things. I've I've you know, the things that I've done as a comic has taken me around the world. 
Like I've gotten to see Europe as a comic and not having to spend any money. Right, you've gotten uh, paid to travel the world, basically. Yeah, I have. I mean, and then I've done, uh, I've gotten to go to, you know, I went to, I did the Edinburgh Fringe. Right, that's right. Yeah. Which was you a know, nightmare, right? It was a nightmare, crazy. I was in Scotland, got me, the only thing I came back from in Scotland was a, a, ba- a very bad habit, uh, expensive, scotch. Oh, shit. <laughs> I did. You drink scotch, you fucking, I'd rather, I wish I would have came back with a cocaine habit. <laughs> it would have been cheaper. That's material. That's funny I mean, as fuck. I mean, it would have been cheaper. Like so will you only drink the good scotch now? Is that like, yes, you, you're one of yes. the, you're like a snob from Inglewood. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. I drink scotch. Like my, <laughs> in my, my last conversation with D was I helped D out. D Militant, Daryl Littleton for those. Uh, I helped him out and he was like, hey, for you helping me out, I'd like to buy you uh, a bottle of your favorite whiskey or scotch. Oh, yeah, until you told him what you wanted. And I go, uh, he goes, matter of fact, you know, the way you helped me out, I may buy you a case. And I was like, I don't think you can buy, I don't, I go, I don't think you can afford a case of my favorite scotch. And it's not that he couldn't afford it. I don't think he wanted to spend so I go, let me send you what my favorite guy did. Yeah, he had, then, he didn't know. Then he, <laughs> and he looked at it, he goes, no, 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 I'll buy you a bottle. <laughs> that's still, he got you a bottle. That's, that's an expensive bottle. bottle. But, but he got me, it was, I was like, he goes, do you have to have the 19 or can I get the 18? I go, I'll take the 18. <laughs> Damn. What is it? So tell us what it is in case any of the, my 50 fans out there want to send you a, a bottle of scotch. Legic, uh, or Ledeg, it's called, Le- if you saw it, you would see it, you would think it would say Ledeg, but it's uh, Legic, or Ledeg 19, and it's in a sherry cast finish. Holy Delicious. shit, this guy's a fucking Highlander now. And then, uh, no, that's, it's from Islay, not Highlands. <laughs> 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 like, I literally got into this, I know, like, a space side, there's Highlands, there's ah, uh, there's so many regions of Scotch that you can there's like but there's like four or five. Islay is more of the smoky peaty scotch. Uh Highland is a little uh a little more uh fruitiness and space side can be a little mixture of both, but more tends to lean toward the sweetness to it. But you're and talking about when you're talking about this kind spicy. of scotch, you're talking about like butter lightning. You're talking about yes, it's like it's like the smoothest. Yes, it's not yes. even like drinking liquor. No, 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 no. You're, you're drinking like, and then and now I've started to drink whiskey. Now I drink whiskey. I drink, but scotch is what I always go back to. Like. If you saw my, uh, like I, I, I had my cheapest bottle, which my wife gets mad at. I'm, I got remarried. My wife gets mad at my cheapest bottle. I think is sixty dollars, fifty dollars. It's my cheapest bottle. <laughs> no, I got a thirty dollar bottle. I'm sorry. <laughs> you remember what Demilitant would drink every fucking time I saw him at the at the Marina Gin. del Rey in Marina del Rey. Gin. Tangare, straight yeah. for the fucking Tangare. He loved gin, and I was like, okay, uh, I'm not a big gin guy. I don't, I'm not big into gins. Uh, I'm more, I like browns for some reason, like, but I, I, I only sip. The, the whiskey I drink, you sip it. You don't take shot like scotch. Anyone who drink, takes that's shots. That's how Americans to, drink anyway. Yeah. If you drink scotch like shots, you don't know what you're doing. I'm like, no, give me this back. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. So you acquired, you went over yeah. to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. <laughs> and you came back with this habit. This bad habit. Okay. Not bad, but just a fucking expensive. Yeah. Big, big did big. any positive beside the scotch habit, did any, did, were there any, what, what came of that Edinburgh Fringe Festival? It was just great experience. 
it was a lot of comics there, uh, a lot of comics from other countries there, um, a lot of comics from America there. And so, you know, we just hung out talking to, uh, you know, Bronston? Oh, yeah. yeah uh, he was, from uh, the comedy store. Uh, Jones? He, Bronston Jones? Bronston Jones, yeah. I, he's from I'm the, acquainted with him from the... He's from, from Venice? Uh, Sam, through Sam Tripoli. Yeah. So he's he does Venice a lot. The Venice comedy thing um and then uh who else so me and him hung out it's a hustle it teaches you just to hustle you got to hustle up shows because it's so packed so crazy but it's just a fun time i, I want to go back i, I hate that this whatever is going to happen i was planning on going back next year right they just they just, the FDA just announced that this new drug is, uh, this pill is approved by the FDA. So it may open everything back up, make everything social to where people, yeah, are people just feel like they're not going to die from going out in the public. Right. Right. That's pretty much it. Right. That's what we need. Right. That's all we care about. We right. just don't want to die from going out. And yeah. Talking. We don't want to die or be like irreparably harmed. Right. <laughs> like it's so funny now COVID to me is turned into the new STD like <laughs> yeah it's like you got COVID <gasps> get away from me <laughs> yeah exactly ah you got herpes ah whatever everything yeah. like that hey yeah like remember AIDS <laughs> people forget about AIDS you gotta kill you slowly <laughs> that's the difference you can't you like, can't die quickly that's the whole thing like if I'm gonna well, die quickly there's a problem well that's the thing AIDS People are like, oh, compassionate. Come, come closer. Let me give you a hug. COVID? Get the not at the beginning, me. though. Not at the beginning of AIDS. No, 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 no. That shit but was, I'm saying, I remember, because I'm a, I, you're a few, got a few years on me. You yeah. probably had some better adolescent fucking years. I mean, I, my adolescence was the early to mid nineties. Right. So we had people coming into school and coming in my yeah. English class and basically going, if you fuck, you will die. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, yeah. you think any girl was like trying to fuck you after that shit happened? She had to have a really good fucking reason. I gave her, I gave women good reason. <laughs> did. I was, Again, I, was, I have bear witness. I, I met one of them. So <laughs> I, I I was I was I was never the guy that was loud, like <laughs> But I got women. Oh, ah, sure Willis, you just had the blessing of your, your handsome guy. You know, you, you're athletic. I mean, you know, you just have the blessings of being, you know, you could just be yourself. You uh -oh. have it easy. You have it easy. You don't, you know. <laughs> I like that you said I'm, I was athletic. I'm not as much as I used to be. I used well, to you're be. a fucking old man now. You're not going <laughs> to be running up and down a football field with, with uh, Odell Beckham. No. I have okay. I do that with my stepson, my son actually. So really quick, I'm, so when when we 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 talked on the phone a couple of times, the second time we talked, um, Willis goes, "Oh wait, wait, holy shit, Uncle Jimmy's calling me. Uncle Jimmy's Uncle yeah. Jimmy is Cat's uncle. Uncle, yeah. Uncle Jimmy showed up after from I, Alabama. He's Alabama, from Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> uncle Jimmy wasn't there though. Uncle Jimmy wasn't like Cat's uncle, like." All the time Cat was in L.A., Uncle Jimmy came out after Cat became famous, and everyone loved Uncle Jimmy. I mean, yeah. everyone loves Uncle Jimmy. So this motherfucker patches him into a conversation with – he patches Uncle Jimmy into our phone call. And basically, Uncle Jimmy has just called Willis to just, oh, Willis, oh, I'm, he just called him to fucking just berate him. And I'm on the <laughs> other – Willis has made the mistake of <laughs> patching this motherfucker in. On a three-way call. Oh, God. Yes. He's, Uncle Jimmy is, oh, he's God's gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> you know, but there is something about Uncle Jimmy where you go, oh, yeah, that's a funny family. That's a, f there's not, a, it's not a coincidence he's, that. He's not even trying to be funny. He's just, the way he is, his talk, he's. You know, he, he has this Southern way. Uh, he's very, I mean, he is very country. And when I say country, God. He's man, a Southern country. brother. Yeah. Oh. And he came out here. 
he still wears like I I, I don't know if he saw boots, old right. Boots. He wears like gator boots. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Have you ever seen an old picture of uh, Uncle Jimmy in front of a Cadillac or a Lincoln? I think he had a Lincoln or a Cadillac, a long leather uh, trench coat with fur on the edges, pimp hat. He goes, I was a pimp. I was a pimp. I had I had three hoes. I was like, great, great. I don't know how you get. And he'll three call hoes. you up just to tell you this shit, just to just yeah. to bullshit yeah. with you about nothing. Yeah. He would, and he gets mad. He always talks about, because uh, he always asked me about uh, Kim, we, Kim I was messing with. And uh, he, he, and I was like, ugh. And, Man, you and, ruined his dreams with Kim. I ruined a lot of people's dreams. <laughs> so what dude, I dude says to me, he says, Yo, Steve, you know, uh, you remember when I saw you? I was walking on Saltown and I just seen you on Saltown. And I said, Steve, and you never even, uh, Steve, you never even, uh, uh, you never called me after that, right? You're making me feel bad. And I go, Did you oh, call him again? Jimmy, have you called him since? I don't think I have your, what? What's that? Have you called him since? I texted him right then. I texted okay. him, my name, Uncle, hey, Uncle Jimmy, Stephen Lally. Nothing, nothing <laughs> from Uncle Jimmy. I love it. You know, I don't hear from you anymore, Steve. I don't, oh shit. You man. ain't gonna hear from <laughs> Fucking motherfucker. You're not gonna hear from Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy, I love Uncle Jimmy. And he, he's like, well, is you, you talk so proper. You always talk so proper. I was like, Uncle Jimmy, you killed the King's English. <laughs> Never heard somebody. Just the way he talked, I was like, oh, God. Phyllis Coco knew that uh, Kim was giving you a blowjob because she could see you know, the head going up and yeah, down I'm on like, the camera. I'm like, hey, look. I I really I really I've never been a guy shy. I don't shy away from sex. I don't shy away. If a woman wants me, I want her. <laughs> Willis, I don't think these are. I don't think you're defying any laws of nature there. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not defying any laws of nature. Now, but you were friends with Kim. You were friends with Kim before she came to Cat, right? No. Oh, nope. she just was like, I want that black guy. She, she was, you know, she kept, it was funny because she kept, How did she you was, show she, up there. That was a, that was a, that from, was she a, was from the, the Master P movie. That's where, okay. That's where Kat met her. Yeah. Oh, and so she probably saw you on set Willis and she was making designs on you when you were dancing that woman out of the cafe. <laughs> Women do that shit. They probably. I had my eye on another woman, though. Man. I was like, oh, if I could get her. But I didn't. You got, <laughs> but, a, you got a good consolation prize. Do you remember <laughs> Spiffy the Poet? Who? You ever talked to Spiffy the Poet? No, I haven't talked to her lately. Man. She's married. Oh, she, okay. Her, she's she's uh, doing okay? Yeah. I saw her uh, on Facebook. And she's married. Uh... I'm trying to think who else uh, was around that time. Um, I well, there remember was Lex? Lex, yeah, sure. Well, that was he's, security. Yeah, he's back in. Uh, he's back. Oh, I'm sorry. He's back in uh, DC area. Um, I talk to him every now and then. He's good. Uh, Cat security were cooler than the writers. Yeah, like the security were always the most fun people to be around. Well, they used to get mad at me because I would beat Cat at basketball. <laughs> well, everybody, Cat with that shot, I mean, he, he could make that shot. Don't get me wrong. The shot was right. good. But, you know, I mean, you were a real athlete. Do you remember when Joe Torrey came and we played? Yes. Do you remember the Joe Torrey night? Where Joe Torrey was oh. hanging around for a while. Right. Well, Joe Torrey plays a, a – oh, he plays <laughs> – his game of basketball, I'm like – I was on Joe and Kat's team. It was me and Kat and Joe Torrey. And it was you and who else was it? Anthony it was... and Sorrell. Maybe, was that that? maybe. Was that that night that Anthony and Sorrell? 
What about Remember Anthony the, and Sorrell? It was that the night that Joe Cat uh, said, "If you, if we win, no, 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 that that must have been another time." No, it was in Burbank. It was, in the, it was at the Burbank yeah. studio where he put up the, the hoop. Yeah, and, and Joe and, Torre was just it was street ball. It was like a yeah, it was like a football street street. It would be a nice game. He was fucking uh, playing fucking. <sighs> He's playing football with a basketball. Yeah, he was playing football basically. with a basketball. Like, there's no, no no other way to explain it. I was like, it was like WWF yeah, meets totally <laughs> basketball. And I'm like, oh my god, it, it just made it. It just was rough. Like he would foul and and expect you to go. Well, you can't foul out. <laughs> And I remember him put, and I was lucky I was on his team. Yes. Because you were on the other team. Yes. And you were, I remember your reactions like, oh man, he's really hitting, like he's giving you the elbow. He's giving you the shoulder. He's just yeah. running right through you. Like he's Jim Brown on a basketball. Court. Right. Well, I, I know, luckily I know how to play against guys like that. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to show you. Now we're going to play. Cause I'm used to playing football too, so <laughs> yeah, you got to body him up. You got to body, yeah. him. but that's a strong dude. I mean, that's a I know big, he's strong. He's a strong he's dude. Strong. I mean, look, I used to play against guys six four, six five. So, and I'm not six four, six five. <laughs> and Cat with that shoe. Oh, and you remember Cat? You didn't have any shoes, and Cat tried to give you his shoes. Yeah. And you you put on these shoes that like too tight. Like, I'm not playing in these shoes. They were made <laughs> for him. They were probably fitted to his foot. Yeah. And his foot is, like, yeah. I think he wears a size eight. Well, we're not big guys, but, yeah, I'm, a, I'm like a nine and a half. Yeah. And he's like an eight, eight and a half. It's a small I was foot. like, I, I can't wear these. And I have wide feet, too. Right. And I'm, I'm like a, ten, a nine and a half, ten. And yeah. certain shoes, I'm a ten, right? So, I was like, no, nah, I can't play in these. But... I whooped the shit out of it. But between him and Joe, I beat them both. <laughs> yeah. Cat with that shot, man. That, I mean, you, that's straight it out was of so, It was so unorthodox. And you're like, I don't even know how to defend that shot. <laughs> well, you kind of wanted to lose. You kind of wanted to let him win a little bit. You just want to let him do his thing. Because I made a Ooh. shot over Cat one time. Mm -hmm. And he, oh, no, that's just not acceptable. He, he flipped out one time on me not 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 angry or anything but right. i was like oh i should just let this motherfucker win i mean he's paying me no I, i'm not i don't care what you do no you're that's because you're old friends that's your best yeah. old friend that's why you don't give a <laughs> shit but if you were the new guy the new white guy who was right had all his financial dependence <laughs> well yeah i can see that i can see that oh was i get um He's, come yeah. on, Steve. I know, I know. We played, uh, so when he moved up. To, and you know he can only dribble with his right hand. I don't remember. I don't remember all that. I do. Um, but when he moved up to Calabasas, you know, he put in a basketball court up there. Yeah. In the Calabasas house. And we went, <laughs> Ricochet and I went up and, and uh, we played and I didn't have any. <laughs> This is what reminds me of your shoes. I didn't have any. I didn't know we were going to play basketball. I just was coming up to try to get some money and work, right. you know. And it had been, it was like 2010. I think it was 2010. So I was out. I was. I had been out for a while, out of the right. room. And um, we went up and Cat goes, okay, well, we're going to play a game. And I had boots and jeans on, brother. I had boots and jeans on and I played basketball in my boots and my jeans. And I think after we played like maybe five games, my, like the feet, the, my, the soles of my feet were all like, God, yeah. Why would you do that? I, you know, I wanted to do whatever cat was doing. I, I kind of wanted to play. I, I kind of wanted to play. I just wish I'd had, you know, shoes. Yeah. Like, dude, yeah. I, I care for my feet too much. Like I do not, you don't understand. Well, I we care were, for my. I came up there with a with a film director and Ricochet, and none of us were dressed for a, a basketball court, so I wasn't alone, at least. But right, yeah. 
So that's where that that is what happened there. Well, so oh, well, I, I feel like I'm I'm a, am I um, I'm trying to see am I answering I answered your one question. I'm trying to make oh. sure I'm <laughs> covering. Uh, what are I'm sure there's some other shit. I, I think we covered a bunch of good stuff. We got Uncle Jimmy. We got <laughs> yes. Give us a, a just a general um, for people out there. So it's not coming from me. A general sense of what it was like being in the writers' room. Um, <laughs> bless you. When we would all meet, what it was like. Just give us a kind of a like a garden was, variety. The meeting with Cat and all of us. Um, it was, it was, at times, it was great. It really was. It was fun because you have all these people, these minds working towards a great goal of being funny. Just all these creative minds. And you know, you, you have this guy who's really funny and creative himself, but also these other me you um d um marquez remember marquez the greatest uh marquez melanie funny, funny comic he was there yeah. for a minute anthony uh, melanie, rose yeah uh, uh melanie melanie camacho yeah a uh, very funny comic um and we would be there till two in the morning creating all this craziness and cookie and cookie. creating all all of this craziness and all these sketches and shooting sketches and doing things. And um, it just, uh, oh, who else? And it was one, it would be so many people coming in and out. Like the Eddie writers- Griffin was there. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Griffin, Griffin was there for a couple of weeks. Yeah, Joe Torrey. Joe Torrey. Uh, 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 Josh and Naima the, from the Empire. Oh. Josh, Josh and Naima, really. Fun. I still talk. I haven't talked to Josh in a while. Actually, he brought me in a couple of times. We shot a couple of sketches for Second City, which okay, was he came fun. from uh, like Improv Olympic, I think. No, he Second City. Fun. Oh, from Second City. Okay. Yeah, Second City. And they were from uh, Wild and Out. I think they wrote on yeah. Wild and Out. They they wrote and performed on Wild and Out, and uh, and, and Naim. Uh, and Josh is, was working with uh, Key and Peel. Wow. He worked on Key and Peel for a minute. He was their sound guy. Um, and then um, also, so, and then Naima was doing some other stuff. Like, they, it's just they all these busy. creative. They were pretty yeah, busy. They, it was like yeah. all these creative people in a room. And it was, imagine just, having a fun time and being able to just create and not have to worry about what, you know, you don't have this pressure of uh, a studio on you to create. It was just a free fall of creativity. And it, it actually was a fun, it could have been a great time. Like I can only imagine this is what Kevin Hart feels, his guys feel at times. Because before Kevin, there was Cat, and Cat had all of these people who could have, and then Red at times. Red Grant would come in. I wasn't there. I never met Red, but yeah, I mean, he was obviously around because he was on tour with him. Yeah, so it was just all of these guys that were, you know, the writers' room was a fun, like it was, it was controlled chaos, uh, or a, like. I want to say, like, uh, imagine your favorite party happening and you're getting paid for it. That's and a lot of weed. Yeah. Well, yeah. At, at the time, I didn't care because I was like, I'm you not smoking really weed. smoking weed, I don't think. <clears throat> I don't like to smoke away from my house. Huh. Because I, 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 I prefer to be uh, when you I'm smoking. To be comfortable. Yes. And not have and, to think on your feet when you're high. Right. Right. Got and it, go home it. and go to sleep. Right. Right. I just like to sleep. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to sleep. So I know some people smoke and wake and bake and all this other shit, but I'm like, yeah, I, I can't know. do all it. I can't do that. But it was, Actually, it was a fun time. 
it was a fun time. It was a fun time. Uh, we all were assigned to different each other's different projects. So yes. Oh, and Cat's brother uh, Bryant was there for a while, and he had some animated thing that yes. Cat asked me to help with and put me on, and then my movie, you know, that we were all you and D were helping me with. Right. So we were all kind of, and then Cat had a he'd have like he'd go have to do an award show, or he'd have yeah. to go uh like go um do a roast for instance uh yeah maybe we should close with that story that might be a good story because you know, oh that was i was gonna ask you remember what? the 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 really pretty girl with braces short hair dark tasha dark hair. tasha Douglas. I, yes she's once you work with friend. her she's still a friend yeah yeah mm-hmm. we're still in touch she's, she's yeah. beautiful yeah she might have been the most beautiful woman they cat had around yeah and he was trying to help her do a show for her i thought you were working with her to do something with i was trying but i pitched something and cat was like "Uh, i i think that's the show you would want to make for yourself mr lally i don't think that's your (laughs) show that's exactly what he said i pitched some funny shit man i pitched i pitched a whole show called um pimp my life and I pitched this whole thing of Pimp My Life in, in front of right. the group, and Cat shot it down. I don't know if he thought I was making fun of him. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, I pitched in front of the whole group of Marina Del Rey. I pitched so, a couple funny things, and, you know. But hey, anyway, you well, never, you got other things. Yeah, you never know. I had Urban Jew, so I had that. You know, I right. had that yeah. moment. And Cat named that he gave that its name by the way what's ta- what is tasha doing these days i'm, I'm always she's, curious she's around I'm... actually she just had a birthday i uh i sent her a message i said hit me up you know uh-huh. so such a cool person man such a cool person yeah. nice nice. yeah nice. she actually survived cancer brother wow yeah so yeah but she's doing well and i'll give her your best i'll send her this yeah, i'll send her this I... podcast yeah i'm gonna <clears throat> Yeah, um, I think we had a little chemistry, but I never, she ended up, did not end up being a girlfriend or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, well, me and Kim ended up more than just. <laughs> I'll tell you <laughs> once, once quick story that I okay. did get laid. I did get lucky out of Kat's crew. Um, Art came up one night. Everybody was gone. It was me and Kat and Lena. And I don't know why I was there. I don't even think it was a writer's night. Um, Art came up and goes, there's these two girls down on the beach, man. They're ready to get busy. And I took my shit and I go, where are they? And <laughs> I went down and Art is Kat's cousin, by the way. Right. And I went down and I just totally went to those girls. I found the girls, went to their place, got high and drunk with them, ended up staying the whole night with both of them. Oh, you had both of them. It was crazy. Yeah, they were half a block from the Marina Del Rey. Right. They were half a block from the office. And they yeah. were just ready. They were ready. And just got lucky. I don't know where, where Art ended up. He he could have had fun, too. There were two girls. Right. That's almost like you took them both on. Man, look at men, you. Some men are not like us. I, right. I, like you, I don't turn it away when it's readily available. You got to prove to me that, well, not you got to prove, you got to tell me, you got to tell me, like, I'm not good at picking up that you do want it all the time, but when you show, when you really show me that you, I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. I've had, I've had women just say, you're mine for tonight. And I'm like, okay. Now, granted, they can't look, I don't, I don't want like, oh my (laughs) God. (laughs) <laughs> you like now, you, now he's drawing his standards for us now you, he does you can't have look, standard yeah you can't look like you sniff luggage at the airport <laughs> so, <laughs> oh so, my gosh that's beautiful you know if if uh, i didn't already have a have a uh, a title for this episode it would be sniff luggage at the airport <laughs> I would, I would do that. That is so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I actually got a little girlfriend when I was writing for Cat, and I take her out to Marina and out to the uh, beach, and we just sit on the beach by the by the office. And I'd be like, "Yeah, I work right over there. I can't take you in there, but that's where I work." 
and I'm sure it was impressive, you know. Yeah. And um, anyway, yeah. So, dude, well, tell us uh, really quick because we've been on we 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 I think we eclipsed the hour, but which oh, is yeah. totally fine, which is totally cool. But okay. we probably should do a second episode. I'll probably think of a bunch of shit that I wanted to hit, yeah. ask you about afterward. But whatever. Um, all of your social media for the people. Oh, so my social media on Instagram, it's uh, Willis Turner Comedy. And that's where I do a lot of my stuff. Instagram, Willis Turner Comedy. On Twitter, it's Willis Turner and the number one. And then, uh, I'm sorry, Willis. Yeah, Willis Turner, number one. Um, and then uh, also on uh, Facebook, it's just Willis Turner. But I always click on the skinny black guy, not the fat black guy, because oh. the fat black guy is my dad. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Get the skinny Never. Willis Turner. And what are, is there anything you're working on that you want to share with us for people to kind of look out for? Um, dates you I'm have, actually, upcoming dates to do stand or anything. I'm going to be in Sacramento. Um, in i think in january next year starting in next year and then i'm supposed to be going to philly uh i'm doing this we're doing a tour called uh barely tall enough tour it's a bunch of guys under 510 so <laughs> hit me up <laughs> it's uh it's a great show it's um yeah i mean it, we if one of you would be the good guy to have if I one fly. of them fall out by the way, uh, most of the guys in Cat's crew were were short, for the yeah. most part. We were all under five ten. Yes, and then uh, yeah. So what else you got? I'm doing that, and then I'm also going to be in a little independent film coming up, playing a sci fi. It's a sci fi film, which is cool. Going to be interesting. Cool. So and we then, can all yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I'm also working on writing a short film myself. Okay, so we can follow all this stuff on your social media handles. Yes. Is there a so website? Uh, I don't. Ha I do have a website, but it's not up to date. I need to update my website. Got it. You're, we're but almost don't. in the boat. Okay. Yeah. Well, dude, uh, I appreciate you, man, and uh, I think we'll probably have more to talk about. We'll probably do another once season three rolls around. We'll do another one of these. Well, come on, anytime, man. Uh, I know you got, may have lots of questions. Your audience may have lots of questions that. They can always hit me up and yes. I'll answer as much as you want. Yes. Uh, hit me up on Instagram. Um, so remember Willis Turner Comedy on Instagram. and Two L's and Willis. Yes. Two L's and Turner, like Ike and Tina. <laughs> Self-explanatory, people. If you can't find it with that information, you don't right. deserve to be on there. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, Hit me up. Um, I mean, and if you like, hello, oh, Willis, I, people want to hear more about this anytime, anytime. I'm always open. You're a good friend, Steve. So I love talking to you. You always <laughs> make me laugh. <laughs> well, you made a great interview, man. We had a lot of history and and we'll, we're going to dedicate this episode to our to our late friend who just passed, uh, Daryl yeah. Littleton Sr., who oh. was... A, a comedy historian, by the way, if you great historian. Can I can I tell you a quick story about D? Yeah, D was the first person I ever that talked to when uh, as a club that in in LA called the Townhouse. Fraser's Townhouse. First, yes, so I went to the Townhouse and D Militant talks to me and tells me this is the da da da, da and he's giving me all this information and and then he goes you know but go up there and you have fun and I go up there. And I suck. I bomb. It's not because of his information or his pep talk that he gave me. Just a rough just, situation. Got it. It was just a rough situation. You, if you ever did the townhouse, I did back in the day. It used to be all the ex pimps and hoes, and all the gang members in the neighborhood would come over to the townhouse to listen to comedy. You, you know, either you'd live with a drink, money, or a gunshot wound. <laughs> this was a gunshot wound night. Yeah. It was so, but that was my D story, and I, I love him, and I'm gonna miss him, my friend D. Militant, Daryl Littleton. Yeah, we're gonna uh, dedicate this uh, episode to him, and we'll talk more. And uh, 
thanks brother thank you for coming on and being part of this and uh till the next time till the next time people thank you for yeah. follow this man follow his career and we'll see you in the next episode on the no idea zone hey everybody i hope you enjoyed whatever you saw on our channel today make sure to like comment and share everything you see here and please hit that big red subscribe button. You have no idea how much it helps the No Idea Zone every time you hit that button. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next installment of the No Idea Zone.